Hello and welcome back to Aviation Heavy. Go where you feel the most alive. Today's session is all about Precision Approach Path Indicator or PAPI. Those who are serving the aviation for a number of days are now well aware of what PAPI is. Those who are new, Aviation Heavy is always there for you. So let's get started. What is PAPI? The PAPI system shall consist of a wing bar of four sharp transition multi lamp units equally spaced. The system shall be located on the left hand side of the runway unless it is physically impracticable to do so. Here is a runway and this is the threshold or the physical beginning of the runway. And on this way, an aircraft is making a landing maneuver. So these are the four units of PAPI or we can also call it them as PAPI wing bars placed at a distance of D1 which is approximately 300 to 400 meters from threshold. It depends on various conditions. Generally, PAPI is established aligning with the aiming point or I should say aiming point established aligning the PAPI. So the D unit of the PAPI is approximately 15 meters from the runway edge. The other unit is 9 meters from the respective unit and the same distance follows. What is the use? Now the first point is a visual approach path guidance. Now when the aircraft is at long finals, it has to align itself with the runway center line. So for that the visual guidance is provided by the PAPI. These are the four units of the PAPI which shows different colors to the pilot at different height of this approach slope. Second point, to facilitate establishment of stabilized approach, meaning it also tells us whether the approach is stabilized, meaning the approach is correct or not. It tells us whether the approach is too low or too high, so that we could stabilize the approach and land the aircraft at the aiming point of the runway. What is the function of PAPI? The wing bar of PAPI shall be constructed and arranged in such a manner that a pilot making an approach will, when on or close to the approach slope, see the two units nearest the runway as red and the two units furthest from the runway as well. Now, suppose this aircraft is aligning itself to the extended runway center line of the runway. And this is the PAPI unit. When the pilot is at correct approach slope, the two units near to the runway will show red and the two white. Means you are aligned with the correct slope and you will hit the aiming point on the runway. When above the slope, see the one unit nearest to the runway as red and the three units further from the runway as white. And when further above the slope, sees all units as white, meaning uh, these two. When the approach of a pilot or approach of an aircraft Towards the runway is too high. It will see all PAPI units glowing white. For slightly high, it will show one red and all white. This should not be here. This unit should be here. This is all. When below approach slope, see that the three units 
near to the runway as red and the unit further away from the runway as white. And then further below approach slope, sees all units as red. Meaning, when the aircraft is approaching the runway with a very low approach slope, the Papu units will be glowing as all red or three red one white. Representing, showing that you are coming with a very low slope and you may hit the runway before threshold or near the threshold, meaning you will not reach up to the aiming point. That's why they are red, showing a signal of dead. It can be used as red dead, you will memorize. White, the height is too high. Now the basic design of a puppy. Uh, coming to this diagram, this is the front part, meaning emergence of the light beam. So one axis data, this is the axis data. Second is the light source. This is the light source. Third is the red filter. We use the red filter. Fourth is the lens. This is the lens which is used to converge and then from the focal point it gets diverged and fifth and sixth are the light beam white and red respectively sixth is the red and fifth one is the white so what happens actually here a typical engineering design specification for a puppy light unit is pre-adjusted two lamps optical assembly here are the two lamp optical assembly and uh, anodized aluminium reflector. Now as we have seen in our cars and scooters that a bulb is there and behind that a reflector is there. A reflector throws all light towards the front. Same happens here. A bulb is there and then a reflector which throws all light in the front. Then we have a red filter, a red color filter. This filter partially creates one beam as red and other beam as white because if you are too high See, after the focal point, the beam which goes above is white and which goes below is the red. So when we are too high, it's white and we are too below, it's red or dead. So this is how the system works. Position ground lenses, these are the ground lenses, two ground lenses. Lamps and reflector replaceable without calibration. Now two 200 watt, 6.6 .6 ampere pre-focused halogen lamps which is here. Average lifetime 1000 hours at rated current. Now the design advancements. 2008 saw the advent of new puppy devices manufactured using solid state LED lamps instead of incandescent lamps. The LEDs produce sufficient brightness to satisfy IQ light intensity and beam spread standards. The average lifetime with LED based system is 50,000 hours. In the previous, it was 1,000 hours. By using LEDs, the device power consumption is lowered considerably. Here, Papi, we have previously discussed that there are two 2,000 watt lamps serving one setup. Now there are three setups, and there are four units of Papi. So 3 into 2 is 600 and 6 into 4. So it increases the power consumption considerably. So IQ suggested to use LEDs. The LED system run internally on DC voltage. So the DC voltage requirements along with the LEDs inherently low power consumption now allow for solar power puppies also. Enable them to function completely independently of the power grid. Now puppies could have their own separate solar panels from which they could from where they could take the required current and voltage and perform their function. The Papi system is co-opted for the use by final approach runway occupancy signal, which is also called as FAROS. System being introduced by several major airports in the United States for the purpose of allowing pilot to resolve a runway cut without requiring a prior notice 
of an occupied runway from the control tower. In Faro's automated line of sight runway sensor detect if a vehicle has committed runway incursion or if so, will flash the puppy lights to alert the pilot of an aircraft on the final approach and the runway is currently occupied, meaning that if, if some vehicle is there and the runway is occupied with Faro's, it will start, it will signal the puppy to blink, which shows the aircraft in the final that there is something on the runway. You can go for a go around or you can ask the air traffic controller for the further maneuvering. The pilot then becomes responsible for resolving the conflict by notifying the air traffic controller and executing a go round. Once the tower has ascertained that the runway has been cleared, the ground controller resets the puppy so that the landing operations may be resumed normally. So this is it for today. Like, share and subscribe. And if you also want the calculation of poppy that how poppy is put at the D1 distance, then please comment below. Uh, Aviation Abbey is always there to help you. Go where you feel the most alive. Thank you.